we all remember months and months and months ago. It might have been 2023. I don't even remember, bro. The Titan submersible, like, submarine that imploded on itself. Rest in peace. There's update. There's an update. Hello, it's Scott Manley here. It's been over a year since Ocean Gate's Titan submersible was crushed while visiting the wreck of the Titanic. And now we are finally getting a look at the investigation that has been going on into okay. what happened. For the last couple of days, I've been watching and listening to witnesses who have been testifying before a you know, U.S. Coast Guard uh, inquiry. I think we've got like another nine days worth of testimony and a lot of witnesses, but the ones we've seen so far are, well, they've been, they've told me a lot. And this is, I'm fascinated by the way things fail, but we have the lead engineer who was fired after questioning some of the design decisions. His background, by the way, includes work on the space shuttle solid rocket boosters. And then yesterday we had uh, David Lockridge, who's a Scottish submersible expert, who ran their operations yeah. uh, right up until the point he got fired for, you know, embarrassing the CEO a little too many. So I will say, uh, I don't know if I said it on stream or, or on video. I said this instantly. Most of y'all know I'm in the engineering industry. Um, it blew my mind that this even happened. When you're trying to innovate, go further than people already have, you ensure that nothing like this will happen unless there is neglect, right? Unless there is ignorance and willful ignorance. Right. So like, for example, you're building a bridge. Dope bridge, no suspension straight across. It's magic. There's a reason it doesn't exist because it doesn't work. Physics doesn't let it work. There's going to be someone that finds a little way to kind of do it. There's a chance that it works, but it's not that great and not totally stable. And there's no safety factor. That'll sign off on it because they want to be known as that pioneer, right? These engineers and operating engineers did their due diligence. This guy that got fired before this, uh, this guy here, I forget what his name was, but he got fired for going against the grain with this project. You don't need to be a rocket scientist like himself to know that the calculations made no sense. I slightly looked into the calculations when it happened. Whatever. Blew my mind when it happened. It's not something that's just, oh, we didn't know. You know it is a controlled atmosphere. Now, bar like big old creatures or something like that. It's a controlled atmosphere. There's a certain amount of water. There's a certain amount of sea level. There's a, a, a certain amount of depth that you're going to go. You should be able to calculate within a safety factor, say if you even put the safety factor at six, when it should be at about nine times the safety. For example, when, I, when I've been on a project where I had to design a tie-off point for um, a harness on a fall protection system for general structures and uh, general equipment you do about a 2.5 maybe a 3 3.5 safety factor that means if your threshold is a thousand you go up the like 2500 3000 right just so like if the worst case happens you're still in luck right that's called safety factor with humans for a fall rest system for example we do six minimum like like my fall rest system or the fall rest system that I helped work on was able to take up to over a ton, 1800 pounds, whatever it was. It was insane because we had it at about 300. So we, we generally average at about 200 pounds for an average person that's going to be in this harness that's going to be connected to this tie off point. And then we add another 50 just because. And then we add another 50 for equipment, right? So you're going to have about a 300 pound uh, limit. And then our safety factor is times six. 
to make sure nothing ever happens. If you have 1,800 pounds on that load, it's not a human. <laughs> it's an elephant. Okay. So it blew my mind when I seen this because just because I have the experience, this makes no sense. Someone didn't do their due diligence or someone knew that there was a chance of this happening and just didn't. They just, I don't think they cared. I think it was negligence. I really do. We're questioning the shuttle solid rocket boosters. And then yesterday we had uh, David Lockridge, who's a Scottish submersible expert, who ran their operations uh, right up until the point he got fired for, you know, embarrassing the CEO a little too many times. He went into detail on how the CEO, Stockton Rush, crashed a submarine into the wreck of the Andrea Doria. And then there's Tim Catterson, who he put the sub in the water, he watched it go down, had breakfast, came back and found out they'd lost communications. He ended up sticking around throughout the search and rescue and recovery. And I'm sure you know that I am fascinated by engineering disasters and, you know, understanding why things failed. I know I'm pausing a lot. It's because I have experience in this. So the Ocean Ranger is a uh, offshore oil rig. It was supposed to be indestructible and nothing's supposed to ever happen. Listen, there are processes in place now that that specific catastrophic event will never happen again. The issue is the human mind can only predict so much, right? So the reason with the Ocean Ranger and why it happened the way it happened is because a bunch of processes were in place and negligence happened. Instead of signing off on this permit and, and doing the work permit and, and, and locking out a system or, or whatever, they didn't pass it in or whatever. I might be thinking of a different oil rig, but anyway, they didn't pass in the permit saying it wasn't ready for operation, right? So it was a pressurized gas pipe that... Um, the permit that said don't work on this was lost. No one seen it. Someone wanted to go home on a Friday and these processes were in place, but there was negligent on the negligence on the process of it. So now there's processes in place where you cannot leave without this permit being passed in, whatever. Ended up gas, pressurized gas coming out through, blowing it all up. And a lot of people lost their life. Like a lot of lives were lost with that. Engineering has processes in place. The way we look at it is that you have um, does a lot of total uh, mitigation of everything. Elimination. We want to eliminate the threat altogether. There's engineered controls. There's administration controls. There's PPE. There's there's a there's a hierarchy, a pyramid of of, of different types of controls that you need to ensure that's in place to even have an engineered system. The reason I'm saying this is neglect because all these processes were in place. This guy wouldn't have gotten fired if these processes weren't in place. He knew that this wasn't going to work. He gave the calculations to them, I'm assuming. That's why he got fired. Because he said, this isn't a good idea. We shouldn't do this. We can't do this. And people didn't want to hear that because they wanted to be pioneers. And look where it got them. It's a lot to do with how I learn how things work. Yeah. And so, yes, I have a you know, certain, you know, let's say morbid fascination about how exactly this failed. Obviously, sure. very early on, uh, I was sure this was going to be a failure and it was going to be recovering not bodies, but remains. Yeah. With water pressures of 400 atmospheres or thereabouts, the failure of the submarine would have been mercifully instantaneous. Yep. At the time, I believe the phrase that I used was that you know, humans in this situation stopped being biology and started being physics. And honestly, that was paraphrasing XKCD. But even with this knowledge that the implosion of... <laughs> I forgot about the controller. <laughs> I forgot about the controller. Oh my god. I, I just bought this camera and I see the same controller in the same aisle in Staples, Canada. <laughs> you could buy this shit at Staples and they thought this was gonna work. I'm sorry, I'm not trying to laugh on, at a catastrophe. That still left a lot of questions about exactly how this went in the end oh, was, it, was the implosion a failure in the carbon fiber around the middle at the end was it the the window which yeah. of course was not rated to those depths yep. what exactly happened and we didn't have any clues we had some pictures of wreckage well now we actually have footage from an rov from quick pause it doesn't matter if it was the material or not shouldn't have happened 
we have all of the value. I literally did a hardness test on something yesterday where it's a like a, a specific pin strip that I have to hit with a hammer. And if it breaks, it has an exact pressure that was placed onto the metal. It makes an indent. I use a microscope. Pause. I use a microscope to look at that indent, see that it's 2.53 millimeters to see the hardness of the steel used. Then there's three tables to actually figure out which steel it was. I'm telling you there are so many processes in place. We don't willy-nilly this shit. I'm not calculating it on my iPhone, I promise you. They know exactly what to use. And the reason we haven't went this deep yet with humans is because we it's not feasible yet. They tried to pioneer something by cutting corners. From Pelagic Research. These, uh, this, this was actually, I believe, the second ROV. The first one was from a different uh, sp uh, ship, and it was not able to handle the depths and got crushed. But this shows us the footage, which was the moment where they were absolutely sure there was no recovery possible, showing the tail cone from the Ocean Gate submersible. Yeah. Damaged, but actually largely intact. And... Many people have been pointing out the ratchet strap, which is wrapped around it, and it seems to have worked just fine. So this was a non-pressurized section of the mm. hull that contained support equipment. It contained, like, batteries. It contained communications. It powered the thrusters. Uh, and in front of that was actually the pressurized section. This section didn't fail. This was just separated from the rest when the pressure vessel in front of it had a catastrophic failure. The mm. basic design had a cylindrical carbon fiber pressure. Okay, let me see. Let me see. So we had a viewing port. So already issue. That is a big cause for concern. Uh, there are not many glass or, or any type of transparent material that you can see through that is going to last at this depth. I don't even know one. Um, forward end bow or bow or bow or whatever. Uh, titanium ring. I mean, why do they label a titanium ring? Titanium dome, uh, hinged to open. Titanium has to be so thick for this to work. Uh, th thruster, sure. Uh, drop weights, yep. AFT, titanium dome, okay. Uh, tail cone with equipment. Now, he did say that the tail cone was intact. Because it wasn't pressurized. That's super weird. That's su That's weird. odd titanium hemispheres mm. on each end the service module on the back and then around this there were the thrusters the <sighs> landing gear uh, and various other pieces of hardware and the general assumption was that the carbon fiber had failed why because everybody thought that carbon fiber being used in a submersible was a bad idea albeit despite the fact that the u.s navy had in fact successfully built a carbon fiber submersible that went to deeper depths for many the carbon fiber used by the Navy didn't have negligence of processes and engineering attached. Okay. Yes. You can build a car out of wood. You can build a car out of caramelized sugar. Doesn't mean that the right processes were in place and it's not going to have a catastrophic failure any more um, voyages the advanced underwater search system was basically a one-off uh, carbon fiber pressure hull vehicle and they had been testing it because they wanted to consider moving larger submersibles sure to, okay um, okay yes they did it they did it yeah congratulations great how thick was the carbon fiber where were the fraction points of the carbon fiber was it pressurized was it not pressurized I'm just already noticing that this video just seems like it's like a this is what we know. No one knows a thing, no bro. Carbon fiber based system. Just got to get the documents to know what's going on. Build that kind of stuff. I believe this also used titanium hemispheres at each end. So there was a lot of detail out there on how this thing gets built. As part of the hearing, they've also posted a number of other documents online giving us new hey. details into. I think you just answered my question. Okay, no, this isn't labeled. I mean, this is not even close to... This is just a figure from a drawing. 
this would be the titanium here with the thickness 2.2 didn't even give me a a dimension a measurement i'm assuming 2.2 inches um uh there's no carbon fiber o-ring seal it doesn't tell me anything. posted a number of other documents online giving us new details into, you know, the, the, the work that was done, including a bunch of engineering studies, finite element analysis, looking at the structure and specifically saying, well, you know, the failure... See, this is what I was saying, the factor... Looking at the... What did I say? The strains are plotted for a scale between 4180 corresponding to a factor of safety of 2.25 and the maximum to show the local nature of the high strains. The location of the maximum strain is shown in, fig in this figure. The maximum ply strain, 4764, has a calculated factor of safety of 1.97. They're using... 2.25 as a factor of safety that instantly tells me there was negligence instantly instantly they didn't even do the industry standard three instantly i see this as an issue structure and specifically saying well you know the failure mode the logical failure mode would be a collapse a buckle in the middle of the vessel yeah and sure well this shows that it could work. well no logical in the middle of the vessel Oh, number one, it wouldn't be in the middle of the vessel because if the vessel is here, this is not pressurized and all this is pressurized, right? And this isn't. This would be the middle of the vessel. That wouldn't make sense because it's pressurized from here to here, not pressurized here. It wouldn't complode here. It would complode right here in the middle of the pressurized cabin. Now, whether the titanium gel was pressurized or not, I don't know. Usually it would be. Um, Just submersed. Anyway. Almost. And sure, well, this shows that it could work on paper, translating the paper into a working product sometimes leads to imperfections. Anyway, uh, one of the important things they also published was the transcript, it, and they did it in the form of an animation showing basically the final... You know why ChatGPT isn't used for engineering yet? And a lot of firms don't like ChatGPT? Because there are so... There are so many parameters to engineering... You can't just say these are the decibels that we want to come out of our plant when your plant is two kilometers away from civilization, right? It's different. If your plant is 400 kilometers north and there's not a single house, decibels of ventilation and, well, the air and noise calculations don't matter. Well, they do matter, but generalized. If it's down the street next to Johnny Blow's house, it's going to matter. It's going to bring property value down. It's going to have a cause of concern for humans, wildlife. Well, uh, There's a million you know, parameters. Descent. You can't go from what paper to real life. Is you can't. To you need to have these this parameters. Is, this wasn't something where they thought there was something going wrong. If there it was, that wasn't evidence in any of the communications. What we do see is the communications were really unreliable. This is via an acoustic modem. Basically, it's making click sounds that are traveling through the water to the ship up top. And the mm -hmm. messages are piggybacked on top of this. There's also some telemetry being sent up, and that's how they know the depth through it, that it's at. Now, the yeah, that's last fine. message that was sent says, dropped two weights. And then a few seconds later, contact is lost. This was at a depth of 3,346 meters. They still hmm. had a few hundred meters to go towards the bottom. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm doing a, just a video about, um, I'm just, uh, essentially this guy analyzed the, uh, ocean gate Titan that imploded. So I'm giving my input engineering wise. Okay. Um, so like with all the design and what's like theorized to have happened and just kind of like putting my two yeah you need it to it's hard to explain but it looks better <laughs> all right see ya always answer the door if your dad knocks on the door okay anyway
this wasn't an emergency situation. If they were wanting to come back up, they would have dropped more weights. No, this was just to slow their descent so yeah. that they wouldn't come to the bottom, you know, and potentially bang into things. Sure. I, I mean, to be clear, we can't know for sure. Maybe the hull was making weird noises and people were asking to go back up and he just said, oh, we'll drop a couple of weights. We don't honestly know. But now, as of a few hours... At approximately 10.47 a.m., NDT... Uh, what's that? NDT is... Newfoundland time! That's my province, baby! That's my province, baby. That's where I'm from. NDT, baby. NDT. Oh, we were just talking about Power World. Um... On June 18, 2023, communication tracking from the submersible Titan in the Polar Prince was lost. Uh, the location and depth of the Titan at the time was 4173 degrees. Uh, Mishap 4173 degrees, north latitude 49, blah, 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 along the depth of 3346. So, but it was rated for what? 47 something, but the safety factor, right? It's footage from the oh ROV my. showing the failed pressure hull. Oh and this God. does show probably where the failure began to happen. So what we're seeing here, that is the nose cone. That is the sorry, the front hemisphere there. Yeah, so that would be we the saw titanium. That come up to the surface without the window in it. It doesn't look like the window's there. But there is the main pressure hull. And around it you can see shattered pieces of carbon fiber composite. So if you want my input, when I instantly see this, I see the titanium survived. So the titanium is rated obviously correctly. Whatever the middle por portion that was um, pressurized, whatever that material was, albeit, I don't know, maybe it was carbon fiber, maybe it was titanium, I, I don't know. Whatever it was, was improperly rated and a low safety factor to get it okayed. I don't know. That's my theoretical, I, I don't know. I, that's what this looks like to me. An implosion because of the pressurized difference and it just collapsed on itself you can also see the rear uh, hemisphere we can tell it's the rear hemisphere because it has the anchor points for the the tail cone there so if we pause it like first of all you can see that a lot of the carbon fiber composite has essentially been pushed back inside that tail cone and yeah. yes that is where the occupants would be and and you can imagine with that pressure okay so it was carbon fiber so the carbon fiber was either not thick enough or or it could have been fractured already or there could have been a slight imperfection in the carbon fiber this genuinely couldn't have been anything to do with the engineers but i would say with in regards to points making a line, someone got fired because they told him how it was. Another person got fired because he was embarrassing him because he, this was a shit project. Another person got fired for whatever. And then we see that they didn't use a higher safety factor, not even the industry standard of three. I don't think that I think there was negligence, man. Pushing that material in very quickly, it would just be a mess. Like the human brain works on orders of a fraction of a second. This would take milliseconds. The 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 brain simply wouldn't perceive this happening before it stopped functioning. So now in front yeah. of the rear dome, you can also see the titanium ring, which was interfaced to the barrel section, to the, the carbon yeah. fiber section. Now, if you compare this to the nose, it's just sitting there like on its own. There's very little debris around it. So this is telling me that the failure that happened was at the front of the pressure module. So the water is all flowing okay. in from one end, carrying the debris down, and the other end is more or less just kicked off by the rebound. Okay, so what he means... It's actually a good example. So what he means is that there was a machine like this, and this was the one end, this was the other. Oh, right here, this was the back end, this was the front end that was pressurized, right? So you have a machine like this. What he's saying happened, because there's a piece way over there, and then there's a piece that collapsed on itself, is that there was, so 
say this ring right here is the cutoff point. This wasn't pressurized and this was, right? What he's saying is that there was an imperfection right here, right here. Reason being, all this carbon fiber would have totally collapsed right here, collapsed in on itself, and traveled down to this titanium dome. This one would have just flew off, right? So it would have collapsed and gone like that into this titanium dome over here. That's what he's saying. Stanky, stanky. That's why it's kind of clean. Also, we know that it wasn't the window that failed because if the window had failed, you would have water flowing in and then you would basically have the uh, hull getting blasted outwards. Instead, we see uh, carbon... Uh, let me think. Let me think practically. At that depth, I think if... So let's let's theorize so the machine they sat in the pod with the window right why would they have a window if they couldn't look out of it right so they the thing the place they were sitting in was pressurized if any amount of that pressurization or or, or that uh, negative pressure or whatever is eliminated instantly right so you have a machine that's like this right it's fine. If this window goes crack, it's going to go and it's going to crush on itself. All right. It instantly crushes on itself because if you negate that pressure, boom, it's just going to crush on itself. If there was a crack in that window, I don't even think water would have came in. <laughs> I think if that window broke, the whole pressurized cabin instantly implodes on itself. That's why I personally think it was the window. That's why I personally think it was either the window or there were stress fractures already a fracture already on the on the carbon. Fiber being pushed into the rear of that hemisphere, that means it was an implosion of the carbon fiber vessel starting at the forward dome. Now and the difference is I can't tell from here. Actually you can tell. I think the O-ring was on the window side, wasn't it? So that wouldn't make sense. Okay, so my other theory is that, let's say, can I take that off? No. Let's say this is the machine. And this is, this is where they sat, right? Right here. Behind this line right here. This is where they were sitting. All of them. In the pressurized cabin right here. Okay. This was the dome over here. This was the, the dome with the window. Right? So what I'm thinking, because what he's saying, it, it makes sense. What he's saying makes sense. That it, it broke right here and all the carbon collapsed on itself and pushed into this titanium dome with the window. Right? What I'm saying is that this window broke, right? This window cracked, couldn't handle the pressure whatever and then the pressurized cabin come uh imploded on itself but there were because there was a connection here that was unpressurized and pressurized it exploded or com imploded to w away from the non-pressurized so it imploded on itself around this area and traveled back down to the window the only way to tell that I don't even know a way to tell that. But if this is the window, because it actually looks like this might even be the window, but uh, well, you can't see it. But if this is the window, it could have comploded on itself towards the window, even if the window broke. But that's my theoretical. That's just my mind. I, I, I don't know. It's so I, also, sorry this video is so long. I'm also not sorry because this is a great video. Stark. This leads me to believe that this is actually a failure at the interface between the uh carbon fiber barrel and the titanium rings which are used to mount on the end plates. Now notably, nowhere in this footage do I see any sign of that forward ring. 
it was clearly kicked away from this and moved sufficiently fast that it is mm-hmm. fallen out of sight. And to be fair, it is probably more you know, like aerodynamic, hydrodynamic, I guess, than those big spherical end caps. Ah, that's so fair enough too. Likely that it moved a bit further after the initial event, and it, sure. given that the event probably began around that ring, I could see it getting pushed a bit faster. I suspect we're going to get more details on this uh, in coming days. I, I'm pretty sure there will be some evidence on the forward ring, which was absolutely brought to shore. Okay, so just to explain what I, I just said, this this is what I think actually happened. I think the failure begins somewhere along this front bulkhead, right? Somewhere between these two things. Okay, before he gets into his, I'll explain mine now that we actually have the... I didn't think about this. This is smart. This is smart. This is where they sat, right? So this was pressurized even here. This O-ring simply just attached this titanium into this vestibule, right? So this is where they sat right here. This is where they sat. You know what? I got a better idea. I got a better idea. So, let's have a little lesson here. Yellow. How big is that? Oops. Let's make this a bit bigger here. Why can't I select how big? That's fine. We'll do this. Okay. So, this is where they sat, right? This is where they sat. In this area here, what I'm saying, and this wasn't pressurized back here, so this was not pressurized. What I'm saying is this area here imploded on itself. What I'm saying is that this window had a catastrophic failure, and because it depressurized the cabin, the most fractured, the most vulnerable part would have imploded on itself instantly. This titanium dome right here was rated with the depth in mind. So this was fine. There was nothing wrong with the titanium. This, on the other hand, is carbon fiber. There's a reason it's pressurized and any fracture will hurt it. This window had a catastrophic failure. I see it now. This window had a catastrophic failure, causing this entire thing to collapse on itself because it was pressurized. Wherever the most vulnerable part was, started the collapse first. This isn't attached anywhere with a titanium dome. It's just an O-ring, from what I know. I think there was a catastrophic failure, and this right here was the starting point of where it imploded, right here. And I think it imploded here, and went whoom, that way. And that's why all the carbons built up in this dome with the window. Now, the other theory is that this happened, and it went this way. And just imploded on itself this way. The reason I don't think that personally is because from what I've seen, this titanium that has all the carbon in it does have the window. But I don't know. That's my theory. So you got to imagine, yes, that there is a bulkhead see what he thinks. here. Sorry, that you have a sphere right here, right? Okay. And you've got so the there is a sphere here. Maybe the O-ring's different. Maybe there was some issues with the carbon fiber. This little pod is back to the back. Maybe there were issues with the seal. Window on the front. And somewhere around this circumference, water basically starts pushing in, or it breaks, or there's a crack. And the cracks, once a crack starts, it propagates backwards, right? You get water will start pushing its way in. And you've got to imagine that this stuff starts getting pushed in all the way around, right? So the water is pushing this in, and as it runs down, you're going to have these cracks and more stuff 
is going to get pushed backwards like this as the sides get squished inwards, right? My question is which which dome has all the carbon debris? That's what matters to me. So this is what's happening now. Equally, but this water... what what he's saying makes total sense. This makes total sense. There are a bunch of theories for a reason. Is kind of rushing into this gap here, and it fills this gap and will pop this window out. That's why it's not in there. And the pressure will also just knock this entire section off on its own, right? So the water's like flying backwards. It smashes into this bulkhead. Obviously, everything in here gets smashed up against this, bumps into this, and the tail will get detached off on its own as it recoils. So what you're left with is the hemisphere, the ring. That's and, a relatively uh, a decent theory. Carbon fiber debris and whatever is left yep. inside this all shattered. That's what I think this is showing. This is why I think we have a failure here. If we had. Well, how do we have a failure on the old ring is my question. There, it would be very, very, very suspicious if there was a failure on an old ring. Right. It would be a failure because of the material they used connected to the o-ring from a what i think in the middle then this sort of failure process would would propagate in both directions and you would have carbon fiber debris in here and in here right that is my conjecture i should also point out that this is radically different from all the other uh, ocean gate titan failure simulations and there's been a lot of these on youtube using a very sophisticated techniques i will say so uh, this here is, um, I don't know exactly what they used, but I'll give my experience. Something called SolidWorks is a engineering program that you can use. Generally, mechanical engineers use it just because it's usually to do with tensile strength, structural strength. Structural engineers use it as well. Um, yield strength, stuff like that. You can design the exact model of the Titan submersible, and you can put a pressure or put it into water and see what would happen, right? So that's what this guy did here. It shows all the the pressures, the 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 different levels of pressures, what's going on here. Uh, this would be the window. So that's what this is. It's not heat. It's not a heat seeker or anything. <laughs> see, great work, but they all show a failure in the middle of the vessel because that's where the peak stress is. And this is a no, uh, uh, yes, but also this is exactly so now I'm this is exactly why we don't go book to real life, because until you investigate, you have no idea if this O ring was raided. You don't have any idea what this material was, what type of material it was, what yield of material it was. Was it carbon fiber? Was it an inch thick, two inch thick? Did it taper? What was this connected to the O ring, but it wasn't bolted hard enough? There are a million different things. So you can run the simulation 70 times, 100 times, million times. Same shit will happen every time. Unless you put in a variable that is going to change that outcome, which what I'm saying is this window breaking and it instantly having a soft spot here or a soft spot here. Whatever spot was vulnerable is where the implosion will start. I'm sure we'll see some of these people redo their work with uh, the new knowledge that we have gained in the exactly. last uh, couple of if days. If you put a stress point here or a fracture point here, it would do exactly as he said. It would start here, it would implode backwards, and it would all end up in this titanium. And so we do actually have footage of the installation of these titanium end rings, the end rings that act as the interface to the hemispheres. And the way this works, it is literally like an epoxy glue that gets laid on along the end of this. You don't want it to be too thick. It has to be a nice, thin, even layer. And then you have to do the same to your titanium rings. And you see that they have a groove which more or less matches to the dimensions of the, uh, the carbon fiber pressure hull. And then, of course, you got to line this up, drop it in there, and it will stick in place. And that's your interface. And if you're sitting there looking at this and saying, well, that's obviously a newbie mistake. They shouldn't have done that. This is no. pretty much what the U.S. Navy did on their design. So um, it's not necessarily bad, 
but I think the problem is a little more subtle than this being a dumb idea. So there's like a 300 page paper on that US Navy submarine design. And they actually- Yeah, and then people are going to say, oh, use welds, use welds. I get that there's 100 million different types of welds. There's 7018, 8018. There's a bunch, of, a bunch of different PSI welds. Like you can do 70,000 PSI, 80,000 PSI, 90,000 PSI. I don't think there's a single weld in this world that's going to hold that depth. I can't lie to you, Chad. I can't lie to you. This isn't bad. I've never heard of this, but I mean, if the Navy did it and it worked, sure. I would have liked to see this epoxy seal, a rubber seal, a secondary seal, an O-ring seal, and it all be bolted. All of it. Test models to destruction. But they, they point out that when they did the test to destruction, they did it using steel end plates. And if I remember correctly, they go into some detail pointing out that you have to match basically the compressive moduli. So mo in engineering, you have like the modulus of compression and tension. Basically, how much force you put on it, it changes the length of something. So yeah. modulus of compression is just like how much it changes when you apply a certain pressure. Yeah. And you need to have the titanium section and the carbon fiber section both agree roughly on how much they flex when pressure is applied. Yeah, that's a good Otherwise, point. Otherwise, what will happen is you will get a transfer, you will get extra stress at the joins. And like that's over a good the point. last year, we've heard a lot of stories about how the carbon fiber composite used in this may have been, you know, a little cut price that they might have bought some pre preg cheap from Boeing that was past its sell by date that they might not have you know, controlled the environment during the, the layup is... Well. What did I say? It could have been simply some botched carbon fiber, bro. You don't know. It could have been nothing to do with them, bro. I've seen... I've heard of people that do welding inspection. Bro, they check the weld. It's cracking. They're like, oh, redo the weld. They do redo the weld three times because it keeps cracking. Perfect welds. They keep cracking. Guess what? It was a bad batch of rods being used. There was too much hydrogen in them, so they were oxidizing and cracking. Nothing to do with the welder, nothing to do with the inspector, simply to do with the product. And that's exactly what I said at the beginning. It could simply be a fracture or an issue with the carbon fiber well as they could have there could be excess humidity that there might have been there might have been no uh, like testing that was performed and so if this was even you know off by but, a few percent but the dots in the line that say that bunch of people got fired makes me feel like negligence then that could I had to well reiterate add that. up to extra stress at these interfaces that yeah. might accidentally or might ultimately explain why we got this failure here of course it could just be that the glue was crap and it, that fell apart but no. you know i'm trying to find um interesting answers let's say and no, yeah interesting <laughs> one way of describing some of the photos that we saw of the construction like this dubious o-ring design uh, these were brought out by david uh, this is a piece of carbon fiber composite which was cut off the end on the right there that is showing light from a flashlight shining through this now to be fair, this is... You have fracture points already. This is from the end piece of the very first one that they did. When you are, like, laying up a cylinder, right, you're basically running this stuff in a spiral pattern. It's like a ribbon you're laying as a spiral pattern, and as you get to the end, you have to change direction. And when you change direction, then the layup doesn't quite lay flat. So you get a little excess at the end where things aren't quite as good as they should be. And of course, you then fix this by just cutting off those end pieces. And they gave out those end pieces to, uh, like, friends, people that were involved. And of course, that doesn't, it doesn't look great. But that was an end piece. So hey, you know, maybe it's okay. How about this? This was uh, Stockton's idea for how they would do atmosphere scrubbing. As I'm sure you know, the human body, it metabolizes its food and it's <laughs> you're exhaling excess carbon dioxide and water. And if you're not dumping the atmosphere overboard, you need to scrub that out. So you'll have things like lithium hydroxide. 
and you will blow air over it and it will absorb it. Well, yep. his homemade oxygen scrubber design was a, <laughs> you know, a plastic container with uh, a base that was instead a grill of metal. You would put your absorber. Robot Tupperware before it went to file for bankruptcy, bro. There's no way. <laughs> You need to get a picture of this and the controller right next to each other, bro. In that, and then there was like a little PC <laughs> you know, computer fan at the top that would blow air through it. I I'm mean, not it's sure smart, how bro. Well this would work, but frankly, I'm just terrified that that was you know what was their prototype was. <sighs> I mean, people are making jokes about the video game controller, but actually, I don't have a problem with that at I all. I do. It was it's the funny. multitude of other corners which were cut in the name of cutting costs. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, I thought they used Logitech for that, too. I was going to say, at least they went Logitech for everything, because Logitech best. I use Logitech for everything. Logitech mouse, Logitech keyboard, Logitech light, Logitech brio. But, uh, no. Seems like they went with another brand. See, they didn't have Logic G Hub to like connect it all, so that's definitely why, bro. Like, they didn't connect it all, so like, complode, like imploded. Other corners yeah. which were cut in the name of yeah. cutting costs, <laughs> compounded by his uh, continual efforts to sidestep regulations and fire anybody who thought they knew better and disagreed with the designs. Yeah, like so I said, look, I think I'm he was sure trying to pioneer something. I don't think it was so much cutting corners days. with I know I'm money. Listening. I'm sure some of you might start, but uh, I, I'm sure some of the people will tell me all sorts of fascinating and new interesting things, but I wish I didn't have to learn things this way. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe. Nice. Cool. Uh, I never heard of uh, Scott Manley before. Um, seems like a good guy, uh, really explained that well, uh, the way he was talking seems like he's never even, he's never worked in engineering or he's never seen the industry or been a part of the industry. Um, but he articulated his stuff really well. I'm, I'm surprised. Uh, what's your job, job title? I'm an engineer. What do you do? My boss expected me to agree to all his designs. Classic. You, oh, you have to question you need to actively question everything in engineering. You need to be on top of it. Uh, that fired engineer was the biggest told you so card in the hand, but no one to show it to anymore. Oh, well. CEO fired any safety officer who disagreed with him. And it's uh, so it's not surprising that when the ocean itself disagreed, it fired him. Um, Okay, I heard a sub safety expert, and this could be all cap. I heard a sub safety expert uh, gave his thoughts on the incident and basically said that he had no real problem with trying a new hull design. Of course, if there was no humans in it, but before any hu okay, but before any human got into the new hull, there need to be two tests done. Before I look at it, we need to ensure that the O rings and the design for the O rings is going to hold up with the carbon fiber, and number two. Um, I don't know. Uh, put hole under increased pressure until it fails to understand actual structural limit of the hole coming out of the factory. Yeah, sure. Uh, cycle the hole between one ATM or atmospheric and 120% of intended limit until it failed until, uh, or until the intended lifespan was reached. Then cut the hole up and analyze any defects that formed during the pressurization depressurization cycles. Of course, that would have involved destroying at least two vessels, and that was not in the budget. Homicidal negligence. So, um, unfortunately, this is definitely something that happens. Uh, it's negligence. I've said this a million times this video. It's negligence. It's negligence. It's negligence. You don't fire people that tell you the right thing um, without thinking, you know what? We're close enough. I want to be a pioneer. Uh, get out of here. I don't think financially it was an issue. I really don't. I don't think this was an issue. I think maybe destroying two vessels was an issue. Shouldn't have done that. Or wouldn't have done that. Like financially, I don't think he could have done that. But um, I think extensive testing could have been done. I don't think enough prototyping was done. I don't think. Uh, I, actually, you know what? I can't even say that because I think it was done. I think he just didn't want to listen. I truly do. Never get over uh, Ocean Gate, uh, preemptively name themselves after the likely contrary to the cause. Uh, I wish I didn't have to learn things this way. Uh, sobering, a sobering thought. 
can always rely on you, Scott. Okay, seems like a good guy. Seems to me like stock and love the ocean, but not respects the slightest. Uh, I really fascinated in Russia. Okay, so all these people are just quoting things that were said. Um, oh shit. Okay, Cold War sub sailor, aerospace engineer, and former submariner here. I'm shocked at the uncontrolled environment used to assemble the hull, especially when the main cylinder was wrapped and also when the hemispheres uh, were th then adhered to uh, to the wrapped carbon fiber hull. Okay, I want to add something. If the video of them putting the O-ring <coughs> on the carbon fiber with the epoxy, uh, if that was actually like a video of them doing it, insane to me. You should be a negative pressure vacuum no possibility of dust, no possibility of debris. They were in a machine shop. It literally looked like they were in a machine shop. Um. Anyway, literally a warehouse dust. I actually didn't read that. I swear it's not pre-read. Literally a warehouse with dust and other loose debris, human hair floating around uncontrolled humidity. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like the epoxy would uncontrolled humidity. Whatever, bro. Uh, they also mix the epoxy by hand. That's also not great, but, you know, whatever. Uh, this would normally be performed in humidity control class 10,000 clean room. Okay. At the very least, uh, with bunny suits for the assemblers. See, that's what I'm saying. Like, it would have been a controlled atmosphere, and I I'm glad this guy with experience in the industry uh, is saying that. Uh, also, he said ass, um, so he's not professional. Uh, the entire manufacturing process was a mess, uh, which implies there were a lot of things that uh, ill fated about. So that's what I'm saying, bro. They just wanted to be a pioneer. So Ocean Gate wanted to be a pioneer. Well, they were a pioneer. Nobody's going to do it again, so they're the only one to do it. Anyway, I hope I did that justice. I'm talking from an engineering perspective. I am not a licensed engineer. I'm a mechanical engineering technologist uh, with a diploma in mechanical engineering. Uh, associate's degree for you states people uh it is different i don't practice in regards to licensing of engineering but i have worked around and work with uh directly with professional engineers and it gives me a lot of insight to all this stuff um so i just want that disclaimer uh, disclaimer at the end if you made it to the end uh subscribe because i um don't want to work anymore so uh, and you can, you can help me not work. So thanks. Um, all right. All right. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>